All right. Uh, the purpose of today's lesson is to <coughs> figure out how to draw a graph of a derivative function when you know the graph of an original function. So recall that um, a function tells us where we are. In, in physics, it's called displacement. So if we allow x to represent time, then the y represents where we are relative to a point in time. Well, what the derivative is telling us is not where we are at any moment in time, but rather how fast we're going. And as we learned, the tangent lines, uh, that rather the slopes of the tangent lines, will reveal the speed of the object at that exact moment in time. So the first thing we should do when trying to find the derivative graph is find the easiest values to find. And those happen at stationary points. They're called stationary points because the uh, slope of this tangent line is zero, which means the speed at that moment in time is zero meters per second or whatever units you're using. So the derivative is zero when the tangent line slopes or when the tangent lines are horizontal. So that means when x is zero, so here x was zero, we had a horizontal tangent, then my derivative has a point at zero, zero. When x is zero, the, va the function stopped. Then I could observe that all of the slopes of the tangent lines to the right of that value are going to be positive, where all of the values of slopes to the left are going to be negative. So that means my derivative will have values above the x-axis when x is positive, and below the x-axis when x is negative. Now, there's two different ways that we can get more details for our derivative graph. I'll show you one method for number one and a different method for number two. The method for number one is just to pick a random value for x. I'll choose three this time. And you follow that up to the graph and draw a tangent line. Then what you do is I mean, just draw it with a ruler to the best of your ability. It looks as tangent as possible. And then estimate the slope of that line by counting over one up whatever. In this case, I go over 1, up 3, which implies the slope of the tangent line when x equals 3 is going to be 3. So I notate that, and then I go over here, and when x is 3, the slope of the tangent is 3. So the y-axis values on the derivative tell us the slopes of the tangents, where the y-axis values on the original function tell us our location. Similarly, I let x equal negative 2 because there's a nice x-intercept there. I draw the tangent line. I estimate its slope to be about negative 2, and therefore I can find another point on my graph of the derivative that when x is 2, the slope of the tangent is negative 2. These points appear to be collinear. I could find some more values along the way that would should confirm that. Um, but suffice it to say, uh, gather as much data as you can, and then infer what the graph is probably going to look like. One of the things that I notice here is the derivative is always going up because basically these slopes are always getting larger. Here's a large negative number and a small negative number. Negative 2 is technically greater than negative 10, even though we're moving faster at negative 10 than we are at negative 2. Nonetheless, when my derivative is down here, it means we're moving downwards very fast. When my derivative is up here, we're still moving downwards much slower. Now we're moving upwards, but slow. And now we're moving upwards, but fast. So down fast, down slow, stop, up slow, up fast. Just what it says, this says it in another way. Now, for another function like this cubic polynomial, once again, I find the easiest ones are stationary values. That is to say, when the slope of the tangent line is 0, then the derivative is going to be 0 at those two points. Then I can observe that we have positive derivatives here and positive derivatives here because the tangent line slopes are all going to be positive, and then we have negative ones right here. And before I show you the other approach, I'm going to um, just find basically the steepest downward slope I could find, which is somewhere here in the middle, estimate that, and that should be the lowest point on my graph. So I, I find a tangent line. It looks like when x is 1 half, we're going to have the steepest value of negative 2 for our slope, and so I plot that point down here. Now, instead of choosing other random values for x, I'm going to choose a slope of 1. You see, if I draw a diagonal like this from one corner to another, oops, it's a little off, this diagonal, uh, this purple line here, has a slope of 1. So then what I can do is I can move that line until it's tangent to the graph somewhere, and then I can estimate the value of x where that happens. So it appears as though when x is negative 1 and a half, the slope of the tangent line will be 1. I also took that same one sloping line and moved it to another place on the graph where the slope is equal to 1. And I found that when x is around 2.2, these are just estimates, but pretty reasonable estimates at that. 
So what I've learned is when x is negative 1 and a half, the slope is going to be around 1. And when x is around 2.2, .2, the slope is also going to be around 1. And this is starting to look parabolic in nature. So I make my guess that the derivative is going to be like a parabola. And um, then I make some observations to support my work. For example, the derivative is positive here, and the derivative is positive here, because the function is increasing here and here. So there's correlation. A couple other characteristics before we wrap this up. And the first is sometimes we have uh, functions that do not have any stationary points. That is to say, there's no tangent line here that's going to be perfectly horizontal. Now, over here, the, ho the tangent lines are going to have very small slopes, close to zero, but there's no horizontal point, there's no stationary point along this curve. So I know that there will be no x-intercepts in my graph. So here's what I do. I first uh, identify no stationary points, which means the derivative will never cross the x-axis. Then I say over here that the function always goes up, which basically means the derivative will always be positive. So my entire graph for the derivative will be in the first or second quadrant. Finally, I observe that there's very small positive slopes when x is negative, and the slopes get larger and larger as x gets positive. So I found a slope of 1 that happened around when x equals 2, and then I found a slope of 3, and that appears to happen around the time when x equals 3 as well. So I take those data points, the three different estimates that I got, and plot them to ascertain this as a derivative graph. So once again, this function tells me where I am. This function tells me how fast I'm going at that time. So if I'm down here, I'm moving very slowly, indicated by a slow speed. If I'm here, I'm moving very quickly, indicated by a higher speed. Finally, uh, in addition to being able to identify horizontal tangent lines, it's also sometimes we'll find some vertical tangent lines. Vertical tangent lines are going to give us asymptotes for our derivative because the slope of this line is infinity. And if I go just a little bit further away and draw a line right here, oops, not a perfect line. Let's slide that over a little bit. So this purple line is also going to have a very large positive slope, but not infinity. It'll just be just really, really big. So the vertical or, um, tangent lines show infinity slope. Near vertical tangent lines show very, very large slope. So that gives me enough information to identify two asymptotes, vertical asymptotes in my derivative plus my horizontal tangent line. All I'm going to do now is find the ones. Here's where the slope is 1, and here is where the slope is 1. So I plot those two points as well, and that should give me enough information. Let's say infinity down to 1, down to 0, down to negative 1, down to negative infinity. And that's my derivative. So to verify, I uh, substituted uh, these functions into Desmos and then asked Desmos to graph the derivative. And uh, we can see how my drawing compares to the graph of the computer drawing. And here's my graph and the computer's graph for the parabola. And likewise, um, here and here. So if you're being very accurate with your use of the ruler and the grid that's provided, you should get a very accurate uh, derivative function graph as well. Hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.